Menzies just keeps giving me grief here because this morning's a beautiful day. I'm supposed to head off to Lake Ballard, so I thought I'd get some fuel here at the automated servo. Pumps aren't working. Now, I'm almost out of fuel, so <laughs> I can't go anywhere until they fill up the tanks or sort out whatever the problem is because the pumps are offline. Ah, Menzies, you just give me grief, mate. I just want to enjoy your sights, but you're giving me white hairs, mate. <laughs> Even though I'm whinging about how Menzies keeps catching me out, it keeps delivering too, so I just grabbed myself a coffee from the coffee joint here just to work out what I'm going to do next. And I asked the bloke about in the coffee shop about fuel, and he goes, no, there's no one leaded here, it's diesel only. So I was like, oh, thanks. But he said he's got a 10-litre jerry can and I'm leaded at home, so he's going to run down to his place, grab the jerry can so I can fill up. Far out, mate. That's, that's awesome. Just when you think, I don't know what I'm going to do, you ask for help and someone delivers the goods. Thank you very much, Mr. Coffee Man. Far out. This will be the sweetest tasting coffee. Bloody hell. Who would have thought of that? They don't have unleaded here. They didn't have un accommodation either, so I'm just going to sit around here and drink my coffee until some fuel shows up, I suppose. How awesome is that? Just when you think it couldn't get any worse, I had no accommodation when I arrived last night. Rock up to the fuel station here, they've only got diesel, had no fuel, had a, grabbed a coffee and then old mate helped me out with some fuel and had a bit of a gas bag with the locals. Turned out to be a great morning. So off to uh, Lake Ballard. I will have to baby the bike to get maximum mileage. Thanks guys. Bloody fantastic makes you feel good that other people they're willing to help just at the drop of a hat don't know me from a bar of soap just to get me on my merry way and he even said to me just then if you're if you're worried about fuel on the way because I've got to go out to Lake Ballard and then come back this way to head up to Laverton he said if you if you're worried about fuel just come and see me I'll get you another five liters which is awesome so let's talk about today a pretty easy day actually first thing first out to lake ballard to check out the lake and the sculptures out there then i've got to come back through this way to head up to a place called laverton which is the start of the great central road and i've got to get uh, there quite early to arrange my permits at the visitor center anyways it's a glorious day let's enjoy the sights and the sounds i'm really looking forward to the lake ballard lake ballard there you go now, you won't be able to see it on this little camera on top of the helmet, but if you're out in the lake there, there's lots of these little statues. Oh look, there's about 30 that I can see already, and it's supposed to be the largest outdoor exhibition in the world. Gee, that wind's got some bite to it, it's pretty cold out here. Um, I've been pretty lucky, the lake's actually quite dry, I was told that you, you get you, every time you step, you just collect mud on your shoe, but it's quite, it's dry enough for me to easily walk out here. Tip of the day, don't wear your good shoes, but it's easy for us motorcyclists. We've got our boots on, but you can see it's a great day to be out on the lake. It's quite dry, so I'm not digging into the salt lake, but you can see other people on another day. Yeah, that would have been a crap day. Still, fantastic out here, absolutely fantastic. Can I just say, that was something very, very special getting out there. Now, just for a second, just take the sculptures aside for a, for a second there and just the, the landscape itself, Lake Ballard is incredible and to be able to walk on the lake and wander around in your own time, you can't hear anything. It's a very, very special place. Now, include all the sculptures, the little sculptures of the little boy, who, which remind me of my little boys, the mother, which reminds me of, of my wonderful wife. Now, even if you're not a parent, just walking around here, you're in your own thoughts. It's, it's just a truly special, special place, and I would highly recommend it if you're out this way. I was feeling that. It really got to me, man. I'd have to say that's, that's definitely the highlight of the trip so far. I made my way back to Menzies. Uh, because I've got to get to, I've got to get some more fuel. I just, I'm not going to make uh, Leonora. But whilst I'm here, there's the caravan site where I charged up my batteries, 
had a shower, toilet, and there's the little house that I stayed in last night. What a cracker! Look at that. Absolute cracker. Thanks very much. That was a turned out to be a little bit of a gem. I went from despair to enlightenment. <laughs> that was all right, let's see if I can get now. The coffee shop said I can get more fuel at the uh, town hall, surprisingly. Let's hope that is certainly the case. I certainly wouldn't associate a town hall with um, somewhere I can get fuel. So let's just hope that the rumours are true and I can certainly grab a little bit of fuel. So the lovely lady inside told me to go around the back to where the depot is and uh, have a chat to a bloke called Ray who's um, just going to give me about five litres of fuel, which is awesome, but they're all knocking off for lunch, so I better quickly head off because I don't want to be annoying them during their lunch break. Man, this is proven to be a real... All right, to where the grater is, she said, over there. There he is. G'day, mate. How are you? Cruising down, eh? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not interfering with your lunch, am I? Everyone's ducking off for lunch now. Uh, no, I don't stop. <laughs> I, I, I just completely missed that it was diesel only here, otherwise I would have just topped up and would have been on my merry way, but yeah, that, that caught completely. And when I asked the lady in the town hall there, she had a bit of a giggle, so it must be a common occurrence. It is. <laughs> it's been two and a half years without petrol. Oh, wow. So with five litres of fuel, my fuel anxiety had completely gone and I was on my merry way again. Before I leave, I want to say a really, really massive thanks to the awesome people of Menzies who helped me with accommodation, fuel and also helping me tell this story. All right, so here's the turn off where I was yesterday, which took me to the historic precinct, all those old houses. Now, I mistakenly called it Gualia. In fact, it's called Gawlia. The people at the coffee shop this morning corrected me. So there you go, don't make the same mistake I did. Gawlia, historic precinct. Not much else. Um, quick refuel here in Leonora and then straight out to Laverton so I can get some accommodation booked, get some permits organised, get some fuel. Lots going on, so quick little pit stop and then on my way again. from home here. G'day Laverton. How are you doing this fine afternoon? That's where I need to go, the visitor information centre. I've got a ton of questions to ask. Road conditions, weather conditions, fuel distances, phone reception and anything else I need to know that can make this trip as easy as possible and as successful as possible. Now what type of fuel is the thing? I hope they don't have opal here. I hope it's proper fuel. Diesel, no. Ultimate 98. Rock and roll. Put this on at the center stand so I can fill it up to the brim. <laughs> She's a monster. Look at her. Have a go at the size of the thing, man. That's awesome. Now that awesome all right so it looks like it's a gated community here so to... at least you know the bike's going to be fine number 25 that's me looks like a little donger type thing yeah pretty small pretty basic blue base oh that's all right bit of ex bit expensive for what it is 110 bucks but Anyways, it's a place to stay. I don't have to carry the stuff too far. Winning. Oh. So being a pretty major stage of the trip, 
Uh, like I said before, it's, it's going to cover a lot of distance on dirt. Um, good to throw an eye over the bike uh, just to make sure everything's connected, nothing's loose, everything should be where it is. Alright, so the good thing is um, she's looking pretty good. Uh, didn't find anything uh, at all, just uh, the rear brake reservoir, that's just a bit loose. You can see the it's just moving up and down. I'll just tighten that bolt up, no worries. Actually, to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. This is probably the, the one section of the tour that I'm the most nervous about but I'm also the most excited about as well. I've never done anything like this on this magnitude on dirt roads, so I'm worried about bull dust, bull dust holes. I'm carrying an extra bag, a fuel bladder with five liters of fuel. I'm not comfortable having a bag of fuel on the back of the bike. Then there's also the incredible distance on, on dirt roads. Is the bike gonna be okay? Um, I've checked it over, I've put a little bit of Loctite, I've made sure some bolts are all nice and tight. Also, Opal fuel, the type of fuel that's out in the Great Central Road isn't your normal fuel. Opal fuel is fragrance free fuel. You, you can't smell it, it doesn't smell like normal fuel. And as a consequence, uh, it's a much lower octane. And therefore, uh, I get a bit worried about how much mileage am I going to get out of the tank. It'll be quite a reduced mileage, so that's why I need that extra fuel. My bike, she's a bit of a diva, she likes high octane fuel, so I'm not too sure how the bike will run on opal fuel, but it's all part of it. And and not to mention with the the past few days of no fuel this morning out of Menzies, no proper accommodation last night in Menzies, plus the starter issue that I've had, they've all added up to a little bit of anxiety with how am I gonna go out in the middle of the bush here? Because that's, I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. The Nullarbor was effortless. It's it's all asphalt, It's there's regular fuel stops, passing cars every few minutes so there's a, a safety blanket if you will with with all of that but with the great central road you're you're out there on your own i called mum this afternoon and um she said oh i'm really worried and i said mum I'm, I'm i'm on a main road it just so happens to be a dirt road and it also happens to be the <laughs> right through the middle of australia so um yeah look it, it's super exciting uh, i'm pumped i'm a little bit nervous i'm not gonna lie um and it all starts tomorrow. So, fingers crossed, everything goes well over the next four days. It takes four days to cross the Great Central Road. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the starry nights too. Like, I'm gonna be staying in a roadhouse <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. And you know what, that's really exciting. There's gonna be a bazillion stars out there. There's not gonna be any noise, any hassle. Probably a fair few people, because she did say I was busy. And knock on wood, just be careful because ultimately I did say to my wife I wasn't going to do anything stupid. So Great Central Road starts tomorrow. <laughs>